What's up, guys? Franco here with NextLevelBallPlayer.com, joined by J.P. Aaron Sebia, Blue Jays catcher. Thanks for hanging out. What's up? <laughs> hanging out in D1 Nashville today. I'm going to ask a few questions, hopefully uh, help you guys get better. So we'll jump right into it. Um, what's one baseball-related lesson early on that you learned that's kind of led to your success um, over the years? Um, I would say is <clears throat> not to have anything uh, – just stop what your goal is. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that uh, that tell you you can't make it, or you know you're too slow, or you're too your arm's not strong enough, or you you know you. They, everyone's always telling you what you can't do, um, and I've always focused on the positives of what I could do, and I thought that's that's what helped me more than anything, um, you know, to become a successful player. Yeah. So you went to University of Tennessee, <clears throat> and. Um, Thinking back to when you first stepped on campus as a freshman, what was one of the harder adjustments for you to make um, as a student athlete in college? Um, <coughs> obviously, was just you know you're, I was on my own, so I made my own decisions. Um, you know, I didn't have to to go to class. I didn't have to you know these are these are things that we were supposed to do, but no one forced us to do this. If you know in high school, if you miss class, it's a little different. Right. Um, and then you had to create your own time to study, uh, you know, you would practice and, you know, now it's your life, you know, school and baseball was my life and I had to, little, you know, really learn how to, how to split up my time and to be able to, you know, know when I needed to study, you know, know when I needed, you know, extra time to hit or whatever I needed to do extra, but to be able to, uh, time management was huge, I yeah. think. Uh, how about like on the baseball, on the baseball field, something that, um, you know, was just a big adjustment for you early on? Um, you know, I, I think that I, I always, um, the biggest adjustment I think was, is, is just the quality of players. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in high school, you know, you have, you know, two or three guys, a team that kind of go, uh, you know, big division one, maybe two, maybe just one person, a team. Sure. Um, so I think that just realizing now there's nine guys out there is the quality of players, the pitchers, um, uh, you know, better breaking balls, better fastballs, I think. Um, you know that's the biggest adjustment is realizing you know hey you know I gotta I gotta try to outwork everybody else because everyone is almost on a level playing field you know for the most part. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> your first round draft pick at Tennessee by the Blue Jays, um, you get to minor league ball. What was your hardest adjustment going from making a leap from college to professional baseball? <clears throat> Definitely uh, playing every day. Um, in college you play Wednesday, you play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, in pro ball, it's Monday through Sunday. It's mm -hmm. all it all runs together. You don't realize kind of how how tough it is when um, you know those two extra practice days or three extra practice days a week in college were were easy, but now you're practicing and you're playing every day. Right. So um, just being able to maintain your body, you know, like uh, you take things for granted. You know, your shoulder exercises, the little you know working out, just keeping your body in shape to be able to go out there every day, every day, every day and play and learning how, you know, to adjust to, you know, not holding anything back, but being able to learn how to, how to play every day and, and, and give your body the opportunity to, to play consistently as opposed to up one day, down one day, up one day, down yeah. one day. Um, you start off a little slow offensively in the minor leagues, but <clears throat> then something kind of clicked and you just kind of went on a, on a rampage. Was there something uh, major that happened or was it just kind of getting your feet under you? I mean, I think the only really bump I had, um, other than what my first year I had just signed, and right. you had just come out of college, so you can't really look into that too much because you go from college, and then you move it your whole life, and you now you're in a new situation. Yeah. You're trying to, you know, live up to all these expectations. I was a first-round pick. I wanted to, you know, hit 30 home runs, and I wanted to get out of the level that I was in. Sure. As opposed to... Uh, really concentrating on, on my task at hand. I was thinking about everything else as opposed to just playing baseball. Um, and that's when you get the pro balls is a big adjustment too, is realizing that I need to concentrate on where I'm at today and what I'm doing today to get better today because if I'm thinking about the big leagues that I'm not completely committed into the game I am, uh, I'm at. And, and I think that I learned that real quick because um, I, hit, I hit 250 and for me that's the lowest I had hit in my entire life. Um, 
and it made me adjust. Yeah, that's that's really interesting stuff. That's good. So you kind of touched on dealing with expectations. As a first round draft pick, clearly you have high expectations. How did you deal with that personally, and like actually be able to focus one day at a time? Uh, I just had to learn from failure. Uh, you know, it's it's something that um, it's hard to to just flip a switch and say, you know, I I, I this is what I got to do. I had to fail first, like everyone else does. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys, every from the best player in baseball, they fail and they learn from it. And that's that's what makes players better too. Is when you fail, not not to be down on yourself, but to realize, okay, why did I fail, and how can I get better so it doesn't happen again. And uh, you know, I I failed, and I and I realized that that you know those expectations when I try to live up to them, I suck. <laughs> so I decided that that uh. As opposed to going out there and, and trying to be a uh, Superman, I was just going to just be myself and let my abilities take over, and that's what happened. That's awesome. Um, offensively, is there a s- certain way that you get out of slumps or something that you come back to to get back on track? Um, I think I'm, I'm very uh, big on slumps are just uh, a mental thing. And it's, and it's, you know, you might go back and you might – feel when you're hitting because when you're in the box and and baseball all baseball players will tell you this is is if I move my hands an inch my hands feel like if I'm hitting with my then my hands at my feet and that might be such a like minuscule change and but mentally you're searching for something that now feels like it's the biggest thing in the world um and and I think that you know once your head starts spinning it's a game that your head's a huge part of it and I think you know, this year I learned about it too. You know, I, I struggled for a while and, and I was watching film and watching film and trying to do all these things mechanically. And our, our hitting coaches told me, hey, listen, I want you to go into the cage and I don't want you to think about anything. I just want you to see this ball, hit this ball, go back to old school. And uh, that night I went out and I hit two home runs against the Rangers. So it's it kind of taught me like, you know, mechanics are one thing, but you just got to go out there and be able to, once the game starts, you, it's all about just seeing the ball and hitting the ball. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> touching on the mental side of hitting, can you kind of walk us through your routine going from the dugout to the on-deck circle to the batter's box? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that have a d- bunch of different things. I just try to keep it simple. Okay. Um, you know, obviously I try to have a plan. I know it's, I know what the guy's going to try to do to me for the most part, you know, and, and that's with every pitcher. you got to understand what my strengths, what my weaknesses are. Um, but more than anything, I'm just trying to be as relaxed as possible. When I go on deck, I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get warmed up, trying to get the timing down. Mm-hmm. Timing is, is, is a huge part of hitting. Um, and every pitcher changes up their timing, uh, especially once you get with better levels, the higher levels, guys do that on purpose. They're good enough to do that on purpose and they can still be good um, changing your timing and then that, that'll get you off. So I think, um, you know, for me, the biggest key is, is relaxing and really focusing in on my timing, getting mm-hmm. my timing down so that once I'm in the box, I have everything that I need to succeed. Um, so then how about in the batter's box? Uh, mentally, what's going through your mind? How do you quiet yourself? You know, how do you get to that place where you're just thinking, see the ball, hit the ball? I, I think about my breathing, um, and if you concentrate on your breathing, you know, just trying to take deep breaths in and out, and just really zone in on your breathing, you you don't have time to really think about anything else. And and you try to hear your breath in your head. You try to just really concentrate on slowing everything down. And and that's you know even with the pitcher, your timing you know, with your breath, you could you know if, whenever he's coming set or whatever you you know you can you you time the. When that, you know all that stuff goes into play, and when you're thinking, you're breathing, and all that stuff, you won't have time to think about any other stuff unless, unless you know, you, I, I can't do it, but unless yeah. you can think about a lot of things at once. That's great. So you, is there, um, you know, say say you get a oh fastball down the middle that you fell off that you should have just drilled. How do you? Is there something you can do to refocus for that next pitch instead of getting upset, or if there, you get a bad strike call by the umpire? Um, is there something you do, or is it just back to the breathing? Well, I used to get fired up. I used to get upset. Um, first, the biggest thing is getting past the umpire thing. Um, you got to understand that they're human. And in my career, it's happened, and it's going to happen next year, and then the year after that is I'm going to get a pitch called on me that I don't think is a strike. Mm-hmm. But um, if you waste your energy on that, you've just, you, you've lost your at bat. And hitting is hitting is hard enough to where I think that. 
if you let the outside influences bother you emotionally, you're gonna fail. Um, yeah. And and it's a thing where you have to step out. You missed a pitch. You still got two more strikes that he has to throw you. Plus, now you get upset. Games the games is hard enough as it is. It's the only game where you hit thirty percent for a hit and you're a Hall of Famer. Um, so you have to understand you're going to foul balls off. You're going to swing at balls in the dirt. You're going to get fooled. The best players do it. Mm-hmm. It's just about how those guys bounce back or how those guys take the next pitch. The best players, and I've seen it from the batter's box, playing against the Yankees, the Boston guys, mm-hmm. you know, they miss a pitch and they're like, all right, let's get back in there. And there's some guys who miss a pitch and they're going all crazy and they're, and I know that they're going to be an easy out. So that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. <coughs> So you dropped major bombs. You had 23 last year, set the record for Blue Jays catchers in their franchise history. Is do you what? How do you do that? What's your how do you hit for power? Um, and what's your approach at the plate? Uh, you know what? I don't think it's a it's a thing where power is just is a natural part of your swing. I think um, if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. It's not one of those things. You know, it's there's a lot of different things that create power, you know, length through your swing, loft, you know, being a power hitter is usually are guys that strike out more because they're guys who swing harder, take bigger risks. That's what they, that's what they get paid to do. They get paid to drive in runs. And, and so you see like a Ryan Howard, he strikes out a ton every year, but he also produces every year. And that's, and that's part of being a power guy. Um, but I don't think it's like, I don't, I definitely don't go up there and say, hey, I want to hit a home run. It's just being able to, you know, I try to stay with myself, do my, you know, take care of what I need to do. And, and ultimately, I'm a guy who's always been able to hit the ball out of the park. It's just been in my swing. It's been a natural thing. And, mm. and uh, I mean, that's really what it is. Cool. And last question, um, what's one piece of advice you'd give aspiring baseball players out there that want to take their game to the next level and continue to progress? In, in baseball? Um, you know, I was talking with my mother about it today, too, and she was telling me that um, she, the passion that I had and the desire that I had. Um, when I was in college, I had a key to our locker room so I could go and hit, and when everyone was out on the Friday night, um, you know, partying, I was in the cage hitting, um, and that's what I did. I, I, all I wanted to do was envision myself being the major league. All I wanted to do was play in the big leagues. Um, so I think the biggest thing is is the drive and determination. Um, you know, if you look at David Eckstein, I've played with David, David Eckstein. He probably has some of the worst tools you ever see mm-hmm. as far as his abilities. But he does. He works hard. If that guy can play in the major leagues, anyone can play in the major leagues. And obviously, it takes chance and it takes opportunity. But I think that as long as you did, you know your determination and you. you you work as hard as you can and you give it everything you have um, you can only succeed and if you and if for some reason you didn't get to reach your, your big league career or whatever you know that you gave it everything you had but I think yeah. that's the biggest thing is to realize that is, is you need to have the passion and the drive and the determination and put in the work and, and really look at yourself in the mirror and say all right did I do everything that I could today to get better yeah that's awesome cool thanks a lot for your time all right man. appreciate it it's, 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 it's,